Chicago. Welcome in to the Chicago Sports Podcast presented by Goose Island, the official beer of CHGO. Find one of their Chicago locations at gooseisland.com forward slash locations. What's up, everyone? Happy June 1st. It is hot as hell out in the streets of Chicago. It's comfortable in here. Well, I don't know. So I'm feeling hot. a little drowsy, but we're going <laughs> to pick up the energy because Braggs is Let's here. Let's go. Rise and shine. <laughs> I was waiting I, for the, the, the smashing through the brick wall. Yeah, <laughs> brick I, don't, I don't have that on this. Luke informed me before today's <laughs> show that this is his first Greg Braggs Jr. experience. First experience. I mean, I've had this Greg Braggs experience, but never in front of the cameras. <laughs> Get ready for a wild ride. My it's friend. all behind closed doors. Brick by brick. Yes. We're um, also joined by <laughs> Casey Stanhar, as always, Lawrence Benedetto, behind the board, What's up? and intern Emma, Woo! hanging out behind the Emma. scenes. <laughs> Glad everyone is joining us today. We've got a great show lined up. We're talking the Chicago Bears. We're talking Arlington Park. We're talking MJ versus Scotty. We're oh, talking... <laughs> baseball we're talking taylor swift tay tay taylor swift tay-tay. can i call her tay tay uh, no. i feel like that's probably doesn't feel appropriate doesn't seem probably something right a guy a 40 year old man in a flat brim <laughs> hat would call her right? <laughs> thanks for joining us today braggs yeah i'm excited I'm, I'm fired up you know beautiful day in the city pool water starting to warm up so Feeling good. Are you this the is my only, favorite? Time are you the year. only CHO staff member with a pool? I don't know. I mean, it's not an in-ground pool. I know some people, you know, poo-poo the above Still a pool. pool. It doesn't. It's, hey, hey, I love it. Me and my daughter Addison. Shout out to her fifth birthday yesterday. Birthday. We take full advantage of it. So you guys are all welcome to come over anytime. I was gonna at some point throw a pool party. I didn't know if this year would be in the cards, but I do. I would love all you guys. To come I, I like hearing that. I don't that. think we can fit all of us in the pool. I, I like hearing that because with great power comes great responsibility. And yeah. you just extended the invite. We're going. So let's all leave the show and go right now. <laughs> do you have adult water wings? Uh, yeah. I okay, can, then I can, I can okay. come. You can stand like where you'll be safe just standing. In Not the a pool. strong swimmer. <laughs> what if you don't have swim? A lot of hyperventilation. I could use, I could use some pool time. But uh, that's taking care of business right there. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, let's hand out the Taking Care of Business Award winner presented by ComEd. Who is it this week, you ask? Marcus Stroman, Cubs pitcher. Oh, Who else? Stro Show. Complete game, one hit shutout against the best team in baseball, the Rays. His fourth career complete game, his second career shutout, 105 pitches, eight strikeouts. The Stro Show was on full display at Wrigley Field. And, by the way, the Sanker was sanking, as he likes to say. <laughs> Strowman was spectacular. He is our Taking Care of Business award winner, powered by ComEd. I'll, I'll say this. In this very dark baseball season that has set upon Chicago, to me that there's really only two very intriguing people on both sides of town. One is Liam Hendricks who made his glorious yeah. return, and I think he was also deserving of the award. Um, that was a great scene. On the north side, the intriguing player is Marcus Stroman because of the way he you know, attacks each game, the way he interacts with fans on Twitter. So it's kind of really nice to see him come together, put together a performance like that, even though, and I would say I'm halfway responsible for that win because I bet <laughs> the Rays, I got a little boost there on DraftKings Sportsbook. It was like a 50% you know, odds raise. I thought, all right, we'll put the Rays, best team in baseball, into even money. Paid for it. Hey, the outing before that, he shut down the Mets, and he taunted them on the way out, too. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like it. What do you think is going to happen with him? All depends on Justin Steele's elbow. You want another intriguing player. that He'd have to be in the top five, for yeah. sure. Had throbbing in the elbow that he had Tommy John on. Scary. 2017. I'm terrified for him. Uh, MRI today, so we hope that's okay. But let's, I said on the Cubs podcast, let's play doom and gloom because that's my life. No. <laughs> Knock on wood, he's okay. But if he's not, you have two choices with Stroman. You either sign him to an extension immediately or you trade him right away while his stock has never been higher 
and you set the clock back another two years and have no pitching next year. That's fun. So I'd prefer <laughs> that they just sign him to an extension. Either way, I kind of – even if Steele is okay, I hope they sign him to an extension because I think he'll play well a little bit longer than some other guys will. I don't think age mm-hmm. is going to – slow him down that much he's age a great athlete a number age ain't nothing no. i'd give him i'd give him a two or three year deal yeah. oh so you're allowed to sing on Correct. the show but i can't yeah, I'm and the, I'm the carm closer. can't carm Apparently definitely you can. can't yeah lawrence can't i, I should yeah. have said that there aren't any more intriguing players i i, I just i guess i mean from a showman standpoint right it's guys right. who are actually out there and and being entertaining despite the surroundings around christopher morell yeah, yeah. When he's hitting home runs, is pretty interesting. That's fun. That's true. But I know what you're saying. Right. Could've, Strom- could've Stroman is the showman. And, yeah, absolutely. And for me, like, I've signed off. I've been, as a Cub fan, I was okay with the way they were going about this the last couple of years, rebuilding, mm-hmm. selling at the trade deadline. But I, I don't want that anymore. And I understand they've disappointed here the last four weeks. But, you know, I, I, I want them to re-sign Marcus Stroman. Either way, with Justin Justin Steele, Justin Fields, uh, health or not, I I want them to start building, adding. I want Otani. I want Stroman for three years. I want this team to start being good. So, no more selling, no more trading, no more prospects. Time to win. No more demolition. <laughs> Your mouth demolition. got here. Stop tearing down. Let's start building up. Some demolition's okay. Yeah. Hey, look. The Cubs got the June swoon out of the way early. Okay. All right. Now they can actually go into June and actually start winning some more baseball games. How about that? Got to start winning soon because that trade deadline, I believe it's August 1st. You better, yeah. better get back in. I know the race isn't over for either saying? the Cubs or Sox because the, divi- the division. divisions are garbage. But they're seven games under 500. So The Brewers have the what, go. worst run differential in the NL Central, and they're atop the league, the top the division. I just choose to look at how many games back we are of the division and yeah. not look at how many uh, That's the only way to look at it right now. <laughs> yeah. The one, uh, I forget what it is that it's an algorithm, I believe, that shows what the record should be based on their stats. The Cubs should be three games over 500, I believe. Yep. So start playing like a team that's three games over 500 again. <laughs> Please. Please. All right, we're, we're moving to our main topic today. One of the big headlines in Chicago sports this week is that the demolition of Arlington Park has started. Apparently, it's going to cost $3.8 million, which honestly, someone said was like, oh, it's going to cost $3.8 million. If you would have asked me, like, how much it – I would have said, like, I don't know, $20 million? I mean, I don't know anything about the demolition business. Right. But I do know whenever I, like, want someone to come out and, like, chop down a tree in my yard it's like an, <laughs> an absorbed absorbed yeah. like yeah. amount of money yeah thousand dollars to chop down a tree right so to actually get rid of one of the biggest racetracks in the country i would think more you know just to even haul the stuff out you're you right know? so it's 3.8 million dollars the bears want this thing down because they're trying to cut that tax bill uh because right now they're being taxed as if there's an operational racetrack on it and they don't want to be paying that tax bill while there's nothing on it, while they figure out what they're going to build there, who's going to pay, pay for it. So they started interior demolition. I don't know at what point they, they will actually light a match and we'll get the oh, entire grandstand okay. falling. Hold on. We've already had matches lit. At 1985. Awesome. Young Luke Stuckmeyer witnessed it from Euclid Avenue. Yeah, young Did Lawrence. You? Was rushed there after school, sat on top of Dad's car, Watched it burn to the ground. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. I did. I Watch. could see it from uh, Euclid my house and Wilkie. In Roselle. I saw the f- giant smoke. We were like, oh it was crazy. Gosh. Where the old Ditka's restaurant Ditka's. sits on the corner of Euclid and Wilkie, a bunch of people stopped their cars there, and it was just like, it was. It was a. You guys a probably didn't blaze. have cable television. That probably. Your dad was like, free entertainment for young Luke. That's right. Get in the car. Let's go. We're going to smoke in the lungs be damned. We're going out there and watching this. <laughs> people too young to know what you're referencing, what building. Yeah, the Arlington right. Racetrack, the way you see it today, picture a smaller version of it in the same exact place. But in 1985, there was a small fire that started, I believe, in a paddock. And it spread quickly because of the wind and the entire grandstand. Imagine how big that is. In flames, the whole thing burned to the ground. Wow. 
And the rumor was, rumor, rumor, legally I'm going to say, was they were having problems with their license and things they wanted. The rumor was that it was started on purpose <laughs> as an insurance deal. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not saying that was ever true. I'm just Dick saying Duchess this sucker no. was lit like you'd been putting lighter fluid on him. You know? it, <laughs> right. it was going down. There was no saving that racetrack. And they built what I believe is the prettiest race. Having been to Churchill Downs, who owned it before they sold it to the Bears, Arlington's a prettier park. Yeah, so it's not even close. Why well, I, I wanted to get into this topic because you are an Arlington Heights native, that that has been a big part of your life. Yeah, you know, for your entire life, really, um, half a century. I grew up in the northwest suburbs. I went to. I used to go to races there. Once I got old enough to bet, it was it was fun. You'd go. <laughs> you Wait until you're old enough. <laughs> I don't know, 16 or 17? Oh, I was 15 and doing some Ooh. damage there. <laughs> <laughs> damage your old pocketbook. But it was, it was a great, it, you know, it was an awesome outing. So I've only known the palatial right. thing that, that... Beautiful. Unbelievable. And I went to the Kentucky Derby in 2001. And I was expecting that. And you get to Churchill Downs, you're like, this place is a freaking dump. Yeah. Um, when they remodeled Churchill Downs after that, they remodeled it after Arlington. Yeah, they went to Arlington. They're like, "How did they do this? All right, let's do it here." It was beautiful. Yeah. To me, that I mean, to me, that a great Friday afternoon at Arlington Park was just as good as a great Friday afternoon at Wrigley Field. I mean, it was that nice. If you liked horse racing, you got down there in the paddock and you saw things up close. I was fortunate to cover a couple of Arlington Millions. Loved it. I love mm-hmm. writing about horse racing. Cigar? Uh, see cigar? I didn't see cigar. No, uh. I was a I was a little too young for cigar. But oh, I, I will say this: the, I I graduated college. I had a journalism degree. I was young, idealistic, and I get up there. I think this was the two thousand or two thousand one, and I'm sitting next to this grizzled old horse racing rider next to me, and he's like, "You go, you want to bet this horse, Silvano? Go over there and place a bet on." Silvano's going to win the race. I, well, you know, I can't bet on this. I can't have any stake. I need to be an impartial and fair journalist. So <laughs> I didn't bet, right? Ah, and of course, boo. Silvano comes through. And it was like 10 or 12 to 1. Oof. That was my, fir- was my first lesson on don't play by the rules. That's right. Dick Dushaswa came in through a- afterward, though, and handed out this, like, nice leather uh, suitcase oh with Arlington million on it I did take that <laughs> you have standards yeah but, but you lower them for some free gifts so the, our title today is the demolition of Arlington Park a happy or sad event it's got to be bittersweet I have no skin in this game as far as being from here and caring about this but it's bittersweet right because it's part of the future it has a past so is that how you guys feel? A little mixture feel? of both. Yeah. I love that parcel of land. I think it's the, the most logical place for the Chicago Bears to build their stadium. I mean, it, it, it's a great, just great real estate. But, yeah, I don't know that we necessarily had to give up Arlington Park to get it. Mm. That said, I don't think Churchill Downs wanted to operate that anymore so are we actually losing anything i don't know to, to me it's almost like the sport of horse racing slipping into a spot you know where boxing now resides or you know things of that nature i guess yeah i mean politicians screwed over arlington park they wanted to put in slot machines and uh what, what all that stuff said no yeah now we've legalized gambling everywhere and it's like oh you, you, you have a casino here, have a sports book here, which is great. But the quality of racing started to slowly decline. And mm. it got to the point where Churchill Downs was like, this isn't worth it. So now you have this beautiful place. It is bittersweet because, like I said, I think it's the prettiest horse track in America. Mm. And I wish, as part of the Cubs' plans, somehow part of that grandstand could have been saved. Perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. But I get that it doesn't fit a football stadium. So right. yeah, you, I'm glad the how, Bears are moving you, there. You I'm disappointed the, the horse racing's gone. Again, how much of Arlington Heights' identity is based on having that track there? All of it. Yeah. Like a, all of it. Point of civic pride? When I was a kid, the day of the million, the day before the million, you'd look out in your yard and the 
Goodyear blimp would be over your head. Yeah. And it was just like, you know, you puffed your chest out and was like, you know, kiss my ass, Rolling Meadows. That's our track. That's why the Goodyear blimp's here. Do you remember the first one in 1980? It was the first million dollar horse race. Yes. Won by a long shot, John Henry. So that's like a John Always Henry John is a Henry. yeah. John Henry is a, a Chicago sports legend. They had that awesome statue right by the paddock. Yep. Pat Day is a guy I always bet on at the racetrack. I was lucky enough in high school to know kids that worked at the track yeah. mm. for their summer job. And they know which jockeys have been boozing the night before. That's a good tip. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> that guy, he's not going to want to be on a horse. I saw him last night at 3 a.m. Let me guess, early yeah. fires. <laughs> the, the I'm turf, just saying, I had a few master, tips that worked. Early fires. I believe but, I have a pair of uh, Pat Day's uh, Pat goggles. Day. They, they're, at some point, they started to, the, the winning jockey would sign a pair of goggles. Yeah, and toss always them bet the Pat Day. And I, I have either him or some, some of, one of the big riders. I got a pair of goggles. Mark, I should have worn Mark them Mark Guidry? Today. No, not Mark Guidry. Guidry. That was another one, Guidry yeah. Was a good Shane Sellers. Shane yeah, Sellers. Shane Sellers. Jesse Alvarado, the, the, the whatever. We Welcome to the CHO that. Sports Podcast, where yeah. three old guys talk about no. yeah. Arling- like all, old Arlington jockeys. Yeah. You know what You know what kids will relate to? Hey, the Dunkin' Donuts race at the Bulls yeah. game, that's <laughs> Phil George F. Yes. <laughs> that's that's right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I actually went. To see Phil George F's last race called in, I believe it was at Hawthorne. I, my, my buddy and I in high school, we drove <laughs> to Hawthorne because we wanted to see his last call just to be there for him. And it was like, it was literally New Year's Eve. It was like, what are we doing? But we got to be there for Phil George F's last call. You've told that story a few times, and I've always I enjoyed it. I, I like that reference. Have I shown my, uh, my, my winning trifecta ticket before that I still carry around in my wallet no. for however many years later? Wow. Yeah. I don't this know why is, I this do is it. The, this is the foul ball. Yeah, here we of, go. That's yeah, where well, you um, sleep, Luke. <laughs> I know. I mean, I, I, in my wallet, I literally have my cash Just ticket. Costanza wallet. Look at this. And it's <laughs> from... Uh, Costanza wallet. Was, well, first of all, I won $205. The horses were, I have a Costanza The horses were one, too. two, three. Oh, yeah. Uh, Just Like Perfect was your winner. This is from August 7th, 1993. Take that, Casey wow. Standahar. You are not I can't believe yeah. the ink wow, is still on that thing. It's I was two. Oh, you were alive. Congrats. Uh, <laughs> I was two. It's been in my wallet ever since. I don't know. Emma I just, wasn't alive. I just thought it was cool. I don't know. And it's been in my wallet ever since. I wasn't since. alive for like 10 more years. Yes, obviously. <laughs> oh, crazy. my gosh. I was on my first internship. Yeah. <laughs> Emma was born. I like that. Emma was born post 9-11, everybody. So there you go. Wow. Feel yeah. old. <laughs> E.T. Yeah, Baird. Oh, E.T. Baird, Jose Silva, uh, Davis, or is doing um, some... Uh, yeah, I, it doesn't hold any sentimental value to me. You guys have stories. I never had, I've never, I'd never been there until last year when me and Mark, uh, Carmen, and Adam Hogue, we, we went out there for the town hall meeting for yeah. the Bears to introduce their plan to come to Arlington Heights. They had it at a local high school gymnasium. It was kind of yeah. cool. Just, that, that whole scene for me was kind of fun just to like go to a high school and hear the town plan and, and everything. And, and I stopped over at the Arlington track and, and took a few pictures and tried to like visualize what this was going to be like for the Bears. And, yeah, for me, I'm excited. It was also very interesting driving from Arlington Park to the high school and realizing, like, the Bears are now going to be in a community. Where, yes. Where it's a neighborhood. Like, the way right. Packers fans, I've never been to Lambeau, but the, the way people describe the experience at Lambeau, you're driving up through neighborhoods, mm-hmm. and that's what yeah. it's like. Right next to Arlington my house. Park. There's all these houses, these old school Luke is gonna be houses parking from cars the 60s. On his lawn. Literally right across the street. It's I wild. $100 yeah. easy in and out. I'm like looking for houses. I'm like, which one can I pick up here yeah. real quick, you know? And, you know, there's a nice little district down the road that has uh, restaurants and bars and stuff. So for me, I'm really excited about it going out there. And I think we had Mark Potash on the Bears After Dark show, and he brought up a good point when they build this. Why they they mentioned making a Chicago Bears like Hall of Fame exhibit uh-huh. thing, but he brought up the idea of having a Chicago sports museum within this Bears landia they're going to make and sh- pay homage to Arlington Park and the racetrack and all the, all the sports of Chicago. We don't have a Chicago sports museum, and I thought it was a really good idea by yeah. him because we just don't as sports fans have somewhere to take our kids or whoever to teach the history of sports in Chicago. Arlington Heights used to have the Italian American Sports oh. Hall of Fame. 
right off Arlington Heights Road. Now it's, I believe, on Taylor Street. It's on Taylor Street, yeah. I feel like that that one's bounced around a lot of different mm-hmm. places, right? Because well, it know, used to be. You got a guy, you know, and then he's got a guy who guy, knows a guy. Go see the Macho it. Man's he's got a role. place with a thing. <laughs> uh, you need some Mike Piazza's yeah. glove. I don't know. I'm not. I'm. I'm actually like as someone who loved gambling at the horse track for years and years growing up. Like I'm actually. I don't really care because it, it, like horse racing at this point. Like you well, said, that that's the other thing. Sportsman Park is gone. Maywood Park is gone. It's Hawthorne just, still has racing. Hawthorne is still there. Hawthorne is the only place you can. But it's just like horse racing is kind of like ugh, you know, like it is beautiful though. And when you're there and you watch it, when yeah, you, sure. For the races, when you would walk down right to the rail. And the horses would go by yeah, at yeah. the finish line, and you just feel the ground trembling underneath your feet. You realize how incredible those horses yeah. are. I know, but as an old person now who just thinks of the poor animals, they don't want to be running, you know. And they do. All these. <laughs> they do want to be running. They want their horse they get, race. They, they want get frustrated when they don't win. They want a hundred ten yeah. pound guy on their back. <laughs> right. They just don't want to tweet about it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They love the running. It's the well, tweeting afterwards. They don't like the social media work. <laughs> They're not on Twitter. They're not into it. The, they don't want to do the TikTok afterwards. They're very <laughs> shy. <laughs> well, we'll see exactly how that parcel of land is developed. Who's going to pay for it? I'm sure the Bears would love to have a sports museum there as long as someone else foots the bill. They want no part of that. They'll, as long as the residents aren't paying for it, I'm all for it. Well, you saw the Vikings paid their bill on their stadium like yeah. 16 years in advance that, that just came out so really yeah to to give the relief for the taxpayers they they paid off the stadium that they just built that in is minnesota, minnesota nice so yeah. sofi replaced uh racetrack in california yeah. so it's the almost apples to apples yeah that's a good point i didn't even think about that uh, melbourne bartholomew says you'll be saying the same thing about sundays in five years i think that was in reference to Horse racing be a point of pride in Arlington. Yeah. So. Oh, I already throw it around when people come in from out of town. Like, yeah, we live in Arlington Heights, you know, home of the Bears. Home of the Chicago Bears. We were there first. Yeah, yeah. All right, I want to thank everyone for checking out the Chicago Sports Podcast today and for being a supporter of the CHO, being a diehard. If you're not a diehard, uh, make sure you check out that package. As always, we do podcasts and live shows on every team every day. We do post-game shows. We do premium written content for members at allchgo.com. Adam Hogue has been doing members-only newsletters all this week from, from OTAs. Got the dope merch for all teams. And if you're a diehard, your first shirt is free. And every shirt after that, 20% off. And we've got that members-only Discord where if you're getting tired of Twitter, if you think Twitter is like this weirdo place where weirdos hang out and pay $8 <laughs> for a check mark so they can impress a billionaire they'll never meet, Pick that. You don't want that? Hang out at our Discord where it's a different type of weird. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we have a lot of, like, we have a good time in the Discord. We're yeah. in there. We're rubbing elbows. People get access to us if they have problems with something. So it, it, it's cool. Uh, check out allchgo.com. Become a diehard today and support a growing sports network here in Chicago. You know what time it is? What NBA time? Finals. <laughs> I'm rooting for our friends in Denver, by the yeah, way. Absolutely. DNVR. Join the NBA Finals action with DraftKings Sportsbook, official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers could place a $5 bet, score $200 in bonus bets instantly. Plus, all customers can take a shot at bigger payouts with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the code CHGO. Who are you picking in this? Finals. I nuggets. Got, I got Everybody nuggets going Nuggets? Five. I got Nuggets and five at about plus four. I'm going to say Nuggets and six. What do you get the Heat for? Because that was my – Listen, the Heat shouldn't have beat the Bucs or the Celtics. Yeah. But they did. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not looking that up right now. Sorry. I want to hedge. A little sprinkle. Yeah. Who did they beat in between? The Knicks. The Knicks, that's right. Knicks. Tibbs. Uh – Use the code CHGO only at DraftKings Sportsbook for that deal. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Massachusetts, call 1-800-327-5050. Or visit GamblingHelplineMA.org. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. 
467-369. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. State-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Opt in and 10 plus leg required for 100% boost. Eligibility, eligibility, wagering, and deposit restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash basketball terms. Sorry, Man. I was going to jump in there and do all that for you. I actually pulled up the ad rate. Well, what's... That's all right. You so did, you did it. So, Luke's, Luke's Jokic allergies is going to be the MVP, right? That's Jokic. He's yeah, a favorite. It's like he's like minus three hundred. He's not worth it. What do you get Jimmy Butler for? Uh, I want to Himmy. say it was like plus a thousand, maybe. Did plus you see that Himmy? Uh, Himmy Buck. He Jimmy Butler has trademarked, sent in for the trademark for Himmy buckets. Yeah, and he's going to start a clothing line and all kinds of other stuff. Bucket hats, Good I assume him. too. As well. Good for him. We had him. We had him. Meanwhile, the Bulls, all we're left is to talk about the past. And the main Bulls talk this week was Michael Jordan versus Scottie Pippen. Actually, I should rephrase that. Scottie Pippen versus Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan wants no part of it, nor right. should he. Because this shit is just getting out of hand. Scottie's real bitter. <laughs> real bitter. It's disappointing because the greatest duo in Chicago sports history. We've had some good ones, but... Nothing's ever going to top Michael and Scotty. No. Never. Never. So they're on this pedestal in the city forever. And Scotty hates Michael. Scotty hates Phil. Scotty hates everything about it. He doesn't work for the team anymore. His ex wife is dating Michael's son. Problem. That's what this is that's all a, really about, that's isn't a, it? That's a yeah. broken guy. That's a, big, that's a big That's a big element in this. It's a, I agree. Michael's son is dating Larsa Pippen, and Larsa says if they were to ever get married, she would dump the Pippen name and take the <laughs> I Jordan. I didn't name. hear that. She said that. Yeah, that's so, brutal. That's brutal. That's, she just seems like an awful person. Really that's done. gasoline right she's there. <sighs> that's and that's a touchy subject. Didn't but like, she if I'm cheat on Scotty with Future, while yeah. Future was with Sierra. Guys, this is T. She's a house. She's one of the uh, yeah. Uh, real That's a whole thing. Of I don't know what one of them. Right. I don't know what Casey was even talking about. Something See? about T. I could use some. <laughs> it looks like the future. What we about it? What about T? Who's got T? <laughs> it's no, the I I don't know, man. I mean, I don't know how. <clears throat> like, what would Mike be saying to his son? Like, if I'm Mike, I'm like, stay away from the Pippins. Like, I don't know. Like. That's that's the worst part about it. Outside of that, uh, everything Pippen says about Jordan, it's heartbreaking for me as someone that grew up the like Mike, you yeah. know, commercials and and the Bulls. I mean, that they're the reason I am the Chicago sports fan I am today. And you know, they yeah. when I was a kid, you know, I'd go out and pretend I was on the Bulls, and and I didn't want like people Mike. to come over. I, I wanted to play basketball by myself so I could simulate in my mind playing with Jordan and Pippen and to hear them or to hear Scotty bash him like this. It's just like, first it was about the book, you know, a couple of years ago. And now it's always something it's, he's coming up with this stuff and it, he just looks like he's in bad shape just mentally when yeah. you see the interviews and Rodman, I met him once at a signing. It's the same thing with him. And we all knew he was a little crazy, but to it, see that it's, it's disappointing for me. Because it's everything that I identify with as a Chicago Listen, sports fan. Scott, the Scotty and Pippen, the Scotty Pippen and Michael Jordan thing is like the Fleetwood Mac of NBA. <laughs> like they did their best work while they hated each other. Yeah. And it's like shattering, and you're like bummed about it because you grew up a fan, and as most of us did. But it's like, would it have been the same? If they were like buds, I don't know. Well, and he's taking it out on the wrong person because you saw in the last dance how jaded Scotty was about his contract that he yeah. signed with Jerry Reinsdorf. He that's who he's mad about is Jerry. So we're all mad about. Yeah, that. Well, everybody in Chicago hates Jerry. And if he just focuses energy on that, we'd all get behind you, Scotty. But you're turning your anger on 
the lack of money that you deserved through that great run, even though you did sign a, a friendly deal to start, I agree. He should have got paid at some point. He brought this city. He put Chicago. They helped put Chicago on the map globally. He deserves that money he that he d- He just seems to me like a guy who has never been comfortable in his own skin and has never really understood the way people actually view him. I grew up, you know, obviously everyone was a Michael Jordan fan, but back then I really liked Scottie Pippen. I didn't, yep. I didn't have their Jordans. I would get Scottie Pippen shoes because I like Scottie Pippen. I like the way that he played defense. I had a Pippen jersey. Right. And people in Chicago loved that he was a defensive player, that he did, he, he did do the dirty work. They didn't necessarily wasn't always, or, you know, always in the spotlight, but he still did all those things. And everyone in Chicago knew that none of that would have been possible without Scottie Pippen. I don't think he knows that. I don't think he knows how much he is appreciated. And I've said this before on this show, too. Michael Jordan belongs to the world, right? Scottie Pippen could have forever been the guy in the city. Like, if yeah. he was the man about town, 15 years ago, I was eating dinner at Joe Stone Crab, and it was like the night before a Bears playoff game. Place was packed, you know, a lot of media members, whatever. Pippen got up from his table, walked out. The entire, and this was, what, 10 years after they won a title, the entire restaurant got up and gave him a standing ovation as he walked out. You know? Yeah. So Eating crabs. There's obviously a lot going in, uh, on in his life, right? Uh, his, you know, his, his son died, which is, you know, incomprehensible. No one should bury a kid, right? I don't know how much that is weighing on him. Um, he may or may not have money problems. I don't know. It, like, a year ago or two years ago, I pulled up to my local Mariano's and the place is packed. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? I just want to shop. And he's hawking his bourbon next to like, you know, the, the, the sushi bar or whatever. <laughs> That's not something Michael Jordan has to do anymore. Right. So is he bitter over something like that? Now, the last dance thing I've never understood people, you know, he's upset over the last dance to me, the Scotty Pippen episode illuminates me like just how much he had to overcome. I mean, right. growing up dirt poor with, uh, you know, one of what twelve or thirteen kids in Arkansas right. with didn't MJ say in the last dance in that episode that he like basically couldn't have done it without Scott? Absolutely. Now is he, he angry felt about slighted in the in the grand scheme of the show? He felt like Michael didn't give him enough credit. Right now is he angry about okay? Well, they mentioned one point eight seconds. They mentioned the migraine. You can't tell the bull story without without those elements. It you did those. It happened. So all of this comes from the latest episode was. Stacy King and Mark Schnowski, my buddies, have the Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast. Mm -hmm. Scotty came on. They just had Phil on recently on the same podcast. And Stacy flat out asked Scotty, do you want to make up with Phil? And he's like, nope. And the quote, I think it says it in our headline. He's like, come on, Stacy, you know Scotty, or you know Michael, and you know Phil. Those are two of the biggest egos in the world. And I was like, I'm, I, don't, I don't feel the need to kiss up to them, which is an ego. And it's like, oh, I get it. There's, there's three alpha males here, right. and you're probably a little bit jealous that literally I went to a bar mitzvah this last weekend, and 130 kids were all wearing Air Jordans. Right. Decades later, they're all wearing Jordan shoes, not wearing LeBron shoes. Wait, they're do not you, wearing have, do you still shoes. have your Jordans, or did you sell them? I still have them. How much you want for them? <laughs> They're not going to fit me. <laughs> now he's I'm still selling them. There. They're still unworn. They're still in the box, ready to sell, creating value. But, you know, I mean, yeah. No, I don't, Stacy. You've been around, Michael. You've been around, Phil. The egos are huge. I don't bow to people like that. It's not, but what else is he going to say? Just get along. Just Or, or don't say anything. Yeah. I, I'm tired of it at this point. The quote that he gave them on the podcast saying that, you guys know, before I got there, Michael was a bad basketball player. Insane. Come on now. Come on. Insane. Yeah. Come on, you just lost all credibility, Scotty. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to take sides on it. You might have reason to be angry at Michael. First of all, it's not Michael that's having an affair with Larsa or in a relationship with Larsa. It's his son. Just say nothing and move on. You guys had greatness together. Right. It's, it's, it's sad, and it's also a little pathetic, to be honest. It does kind of suck that when you do go to a Bulls game, there's never any – used to go to Blackhawks games, 
and Bobby Hall and Stan Mikita would be in a box. They'd come out together, and, and we could think whatever we want about Bobby Hall, but that still was a throwback to the glory days, right? There's no chance that you're ever going to go to a Bulls game right. and Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen aren't going to be there together, right? Now, some of that is Michael Jordan really – I mean, I would say Michael Jordan would, would be a bridge too far to say that he's abandoned Chicago. Well, when was the last time he was really – when was the last he time he, was here? Red, he came for Red Kerr's farewell, basically? What was that? Fifteen years ago, at least, <laughs> at least. And I'm so I was just sitting here wondering when would be the next time. 50, 50 year anniversary of of the first championship or something. When, whenever that event comes, where they're like Michael. We need you as an organization. We'll pay you whatever it takes to come back. We want to celebrate those teams right. at the United Center. We want to celebrate 50 years of it. Come back. Is Scotty going to be like, no, nope, MJ's there. I'm not going. Like, I, please figure yeah. this out before that yeah. happens. Right. It would be nice to have them both there. They have to be there. But you, know, you know what I'm saying, though? Like, Scotty Pippen could be the guy in Chicago because yes. Jordan is never here. What Joakim Noah right now is doing for the city of Chicago, that could be Scotty Pippen. Right. You know, how about how much people love Joakim Noah here right now? Yes. Well, and Scotty was the in- ambassador for the Bulls for a period and, of right. time, right? And then all of a sudden he they just wasn't. They had him on the sidelines. But I just always wasn't. thought that Michael should have been the guy here. I mean, he don't want nothing to do with it because he's been in the spotlight all of his life. Well, and he's owning the other team. Right. you own right. another team, team it makes it, yeah. He just feels but he so. Did, it did feel like Jordan, once he, he, first he owned the Wizards, then he goes to Charlotte. That he wanted to distance himself from Chicago. It did feel like that. Like, I'm going to do my own thing over here. Well, his house has been for sale for like 20 years. Carm went up right. to it. Carm was there. I, I, I asked, <laughs> did I ask you this question before uh, the show today? If Michael Jordan was the owner of the Bulls for his entire post-Jordan career, would people in Chicago hate Michael Jordan right now? If it was going like it was for Charlotte? It was going like, or, or if it just went like it has for the Bulls the last time. Michael like Jordan. People hate Michael Jordan at all. If or Michael saying, Jordan okay, was owner of the saying. Bulls yeah. from 1999 to 2023, would people in this town hate Michael I think Jordan? So, no, yes. because I do. Tracy McGrady would I have do. came to the Bulls if yeah. Michael Jordan yeah. owned the Bulls. Yeah, it Kobe been Bryant would have came to the Bulls if Michael Jordan. Did they go Jordan, to Charlotte? It's Chicago. No, but, but those players all considered the Bulls. Yeah. They people want to hate anybody, there. though. Kobe, people want to hate anybody. The if the, if the yeah, current Bulls were who they close. were, yeah, I think people would hate Michael. I do. I mean, those people would be stupid. But. This town has a lot of, like... And he's been a crummy owner. <laughs> They'd hate him as an owner. They'd probably hate him as That's an owner. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm trying to think people hate John who would Paxson. be comparable. <laughs> people no, have soured would. on Pax. People, people have soured Chicago on Ditka. People don't give any grace for stuff like that. So, yes, they would hate him. Hmm. It's, it's hard for people. I mean, I think the one thing we should really take from the Scottie Pippen thing is it is hard for people to transition to a post-career environment. I mean, there's just Big no time. way. Especially at that level of greatness. He's not succeeding at business. He's, he's not succeeding at media. He's not succeeding in a lot of things, and this is what he's left with. And he does know that if he says something bad about Michael, that will get him attention too. Yeah, and that's what it boils down to at this point. Michael's not blameless in this feud. I will say that. He has the same feud with Charles Barkley, who wants no part of the feud, but he refuses to speak to Charles Barkley. Now, there's one superstar, not as big as Michael, but just as big as Scotty, who has found that success, and something that will satisfy him somewhat. Right. Not many do. Larry Bird was not a great coach. Magic was a horrible TV show host. But he, <laughs> Magic has succeeded He's in business. He found something. Jerry West found something. Yep. I feel like Isaiah's still looking, too. Yeah. It's not uncommon. It's tough. Feel bad for him. Here at CHGO, we are excited to partner with our friends at Circle K. Check out your local Circle K for the best coffee, beer, and snack selection and premium gas. Look out for freebies and giveaways also down the road. Luke, I took this for you because I can I tell you're voice. struggling a little it's going. bit. It's going. The allergies are just... On the way home, I would recommend that you stop in a Circle K 
Probably hit some of their coffee, a warm drink. I know they've got it there. It's, it's what about be a Ricola? Little... I was going to say a Ricola. Ricola. Yeah. Do they... I got a lot okay. to sing. I sang. Yeah, I did go. it. Good job. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's hear it again. Ricola. <laughs> Nikola Meritich. Three Ricola. <laughs> anyway, Circle K is uh, your spot for anything you need to grab, whether it's a hot drink, a cold drink, a thing of beef jerky. You want to check out Circle K. Thank you to Circle K for sponsoring CHGO. Visit the nurse Circle K to pick up all your favorite finds. Uh, by the way, I'm a little stressed too. I'm not sick. My voice is fine. I'm a little stressed. My wife wants to go to Taylor Swift. Oh boy. Here we go. I don't go. know if it's happening. Did you take out a second mortgage or? I don't, I don't think it's happening, but You're if it either. does happen, uh, we're going to try hitting the Ticketmaster route today. They're probably going to drop a few things, but I think everyone. Drop is, how much? I don't know. You're either the husband of the year or you're trash, Kevin, right. oh. this weekend. This wow. is it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but we're very excited for Taylor to be here. Yeah, this is yeah. the first time she's been here in, what, five years? Yeah. So I like. So if it's going to work out, it's probably going to be us standing outside mm-hmm. with our Game Time app open, oh. l- waiting for a flash deal, waiting for me to finally break and say, okay, I will you know, We'll just figure this out. We'll, I don't know, we'll sell something on eBay. Uh, organ or or whatever but it's good the cheapest thing is going to be game time yes because with game time buying tickets your favorite events should not be stressful and it's a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports music comedy and theater near you with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you will have again they have flash deals and last minute tickets Images of seat views, which is nice because it actually will show you that the back of the stage you will be looking at Taylor Swift, yeah. which is like they, they have a lot of seats behind the stage, but I guess she actually comes out on the apron and sings to all the, the Swifties who are partying Don't get over to hear there. her live. Yeah. Game Time has the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, and job loss protection, et cetera. Game Time is the place for last-minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance, which if I had been planning months in advance, I probably would have been in this pickle. Uh, Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the time of the event. Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Yikes. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. So snag the tickets without the stress at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHGO for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHGO for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. And just the let's take a look here at the lowest price, fourteen hundred and fifty four dollars. That's piece. outrageous. That's Outrageously priced. I don't know if it's going to happen for my wife at that price, but I don't think it is. Here's. And they that's why a bad seat. That's like behind the stage. Yeah, that was behind the stage. Have fun. The prices always go down, though. I well, think. Go down to what? 1000 Yeah. How big of a fan are you? Casey? Not that big. <laughs> yeah, no. Was she supposed no, like to be her. a country singer great. first? She was a country singer at first. I'm just looking up her uh, Twitter. Yeah. Which I'm not a follower. She follows nobody. Zero. How many Twitter followers do you think Taylor Swift has? Millions. 92 million. 2.6 million. You looked it up. No, almost 93 million. I think I saw that the other day. 92.8 million? Is there, there, is there somebody with more? Maybe. Probably Kardashian. Emma, look that up. Who has the most Twitter followers? <laughs> 93 million people? <laughs> yeah, and they all want tickets to her show. It. Yeah. 1,500 a pop. Elon Musk has the most? Ugh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, he did that himself. He. he yeah. Elon just put that number out there. That's I would n- I would have followed Elon Musk if you paid me. Same. What could he tweet? What could he possibly say to you? I probably just got blacklisted on this. Yeah, he heard you. <laughs> He's listening. Shit. Here goes your check mark. Is it time, guys, to talk about T Swift? Sure, because I got all these graphics in here. Listen. Well, we have to talk about game time game of the week. Oh. So oh. if we if you don't oh. want to go to Taylor Swift, you've got Tigers at Sox. I'm actually going on Friday night. We've got some nice seats from a friend of my dad's, so that'd be nice. Three ninety nine, but you get a good deal on game time if you're going out there tonight. The Yeah Yeah Yeahs, you remember them? No, oh, new album's amazing. 
They had a song they're playing, Guitar Hero. They're playing at a Huntington Bank Pavilion. I thought that was the you Beatles. Know. Oh, they're yeah. they're at uh, yeah. North Lee Island. Song. That's, yep. No, they're a band name. Maps oh. Maps is probably like the greatest Maps. song of the 2000s. I've been singing a lot on this show. God, that's, <laughs> wait. It's I like contagious. that song. Also <laughs> tomorrow, uh, the the Liberty are playing at the Sky. They moved that game up to five p.m. because oh. they were worried about all the the traffic at I mean, coming in be. for Taylor Swift. Bears better get that stadium built in Arlington Heights. Taylor Swift comes back. I took a car service home from the airport uh, two weekends ago. Guy said that every single limousine is booked in the area for all three nights. They're getting like two thousand dollars a night for a limo. Wow. Cool story. I don't. <laughs> aren't you impressed by these these facts no, and figures? No, I don't I even know a song. Like All right. So we did a fun social media yeah, project. Yeah, this is so this fun. Week. I'm this gonna let, so I'm gonna let Casey go through this. Yeah, we actually haven't done it yet. Thanks to Joey. Uh, thanks to Law. Thanks to Kevin. Everybody who came up with some of these great ideas. Taylor Swift beginning her three nights here at Soldier Field, and in honor of her returning to our city, we decided to make our own album covers and match her lyrics to Chicago sports figures. So here it is, Chicago sports, Taylor's version. First one, we are never, ever, ever getting back together. And of course, <laughs> Scotty and MJ from the Red Album. <laughs> now all of these are made in the Midnights. The Red Album for the Bulls. Here's the second one from Midnights, Antihero. It's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. And you know who it is, Jerry Reinsdorf. Ouch. Yes. Oh. Our third one is also from the Red Album. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. <laughs> it's Tony Larusa. Absolutely Ooh. perfect for that. And this next one is our guy, QB1, Justin Fields. I've got a blank space, baby, and I'll write your name. Perfect lyrics from Blank Space from 1989 because he, we want him to be the guy. Well, we know that we know the other lyric from that. It's either going to be forever or it's going to go down in flames. Right. Eeks. And hopefully it does not go down in flames with JF1. This one from the Lover album, I promise that you'll never find another like me. And it is Connor Bedard. <laughs> NHL <laughs> draft it. coming up. We don't think we're ever going to find anything like him. So My heart's a flutter. We got him. <laughs> Excited for him to be a Blackhawk. And from Folklore, the one, and it would have been fun if you would have been the one, mm. Derek Rose. Mm. And our very last one so sad. from Fearless. It's a love story. Baby, just say yes. Shohei Otani huh? in a Cubs uniform. Looks pretty good to me. I think he could wear it. Looks Need real it. good. Need it. Need it. <laughs> Need it. We know Suzuki is trying to recruit him to the Cubs. So, yes, yeah, say yes to our love story, Shohei. Well done. <laughs> Very nice. That was fun. That was fun. So did any of those lyrics ring a bell, Luke? No, it worked out perfectly that she sings about breakups all the time because that's we got a lot of sadness in Chicago sports. <laughs> None of the uh what was the very what was the very first one? It was uh MJ and Scotty. But what was the lyric? We are never ever ever getting yeah, yeah. back together. You know that song, I can right? I can hear that going in my head now. Yeah. Yeah. Ever, You've never ever, heard like ever. So you walked yeah. into my office before this and said I've never heard any Taylor Swift songs. I'm no, like, I have. Have I you been breathing oxygen for the past 15 years? Like, <laughs> I've heard that song. Have you been in a gym or a grocery store or? More a grocery store. Shake yeah. It Off. You know the song Shake It Off? I know Shake It Off. Yeah, but I wouldn't have known that was. Wow. How does it go? Hate is gonna hate, 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 hate Oh, yeah, I know that one. I know that one, but I didn't know the name of the song was Shake It Off. Yeah. Well, now you do. So now I know two songs. <laughs> Fire, fire up the Apple Music on the way home and just enjoy. I'm not I, I like. I'm obviously not a big Taylor Swift fan, but to me, I like spectacles. I like seeing people at the top of their game, and like Taylor Swift is at the top of the game. To me, this is like all right. I'm I'm going to see Michael Jackson in 1988, right? I wish I would have seen that. She's that level. I don't know. I, She's it's, it's two thousand dollars to get in. She must be. It's got to be close. It's I, I have it's bigger than that. Harry guy that was here a couple. I honestly, if you put both of those tickets in front of me, I would pick Harry Styles, wow. no question. Wow. First. I would love to see them both, absolutely. But if I could only pick one and you have a gun to my head, I would pick Harry Styles. I'm sorry. Look at Emma nodding in agreement. Harry, 
Yeah. I so just, the, the crazy thing to me is like basically Chicago is getting like three Super Bowls in three days at the Soldier Field, right? Which is nice because we've never had a Super Bowl mm-hmm. there. Right. These Heights. ticket prices are crazy. I tweeted earlier today to get into game one of the NBA Finals in Denver tonight. Get in price is $567. Get in price when I looked it up for night one was $1,848. Oh, wow. I mean, it's just got to be a lot of parents just Alpha being like, Matt all right. Me that's three times. Wow. I don't know. That's crazy. Absolutely nuts. I so. would. I know. I know that Braggs. Once his daughter gets that age, he'll he'll pay whatever whatever band that she wants to go see. Braggs would be like, "Money is no object." Here's the old Braggs Front credit row. card in the pit. I got to tell you right <laughs> now, if the Beatles said they were all alive and they'd come back and play one more concert in Chicago, I would not pay eighteen hundred dollars to go see it. I saw Tom would they, Petty would at they, Wrigley oh, two that. months before he passed. Wow. I'm very grateful for that. I've seen him many times, and that's the concert I didn't go to, and I regret it now forever. Luke, Luke saw the Beatles at Comiskey in 1964. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I, would it be the Beatles at their, like, peak? At their peak? Yeah. And you wouldn't pay people, $1,800? People passing out in the, in the stands. No. I mean, that's crazy. Robert said in 20 years, yeah. nobody will give a crap about Taylor Swift. Yeah, don't listen I think to about this a lot. Like, Robert's will, been saying uh, some things. Will it, will it withstand the test of time? Like, will we be talking about her the way we talk about Michael Jackson, the way we play the yes. Beatles, the way we or the play ro- yeah, Because or you'll the be rolling the ones sto- talking about it, or but the your rolling kids stones won't. who are still touring. Yeah. They've been touring for like seven decades. Yeah, she's going to be like Stevie Literally. Nicks. Maybe way, way, way I, bigger. But she's at, at some, Probably in like 10 years. Some Vegas casino is going to want her for a residency, and they're not going to be able to afford her. So they're just going to be like, "Here, have the casino. <laughs> this is yours now. This is, is yours she, now. <laughs> is she bigger? Is she bigger now than Britney Spears was? Yes. Absolutely, back yes. in Britney's day. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Britney's, I think so. Britney's window was only like, I don't a know. couple years. Britney was great, and Taylor me Swift up writes in the 90s, and performs her own songs. Britney, yeah, Britney did a Britney little was bit just of pop that. Garbage. Not, yeah. Yeah. Will Taylor Swift ever do the Super Bowl? Uh, she doesn't need it. She doesn't. Well, first of all, nobody. You, you don't get paid to do it, You don't get right? paid. Right. Yeah, she's so, not doing that. You get paid an exposure. You know what? She'll do it. She's 63. Correct. That'll be fun. That's when she'll do it. 63. Shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> shake it off. <laughs> Excellent. She's taken $650 million personally out of this tour. Uh, well, must be nice. She's like a year older than me, and she's a billionaire. Well, we can't all be Taylor Swift. We can't there, all be T Swift. She still can't uh, get a healthy relationship, though. <laughs> Take that. So, Tay-tay. how you like them apples, <laughs> Tay Tay? Can we talk about Zach Campbell real quick? Can we, sure. Did you have that in there? Sure, if we want to. So, Zach Campbell is this guy. He's a loser. I think most people know who he is. He loser. sucks. Yeah, he sucks. He was out at the. Out at the cell this week, trying to catch home run balls, and I give him credit for realizing that Shohei Otani and Mike Trout would be coming to town, and they would be facing White Sox pitching, and there wouldn't be a lot of people in the bleachers, so he would be able to kind of run around. But look at this screen cap here: Mike Trout hits a home run, and this little boy wearing an Angels jersey catches the home run, and all those South Siders around him, real happy for the kid, all. All real happy. And then look at Zach Campbell and his crappy Rob Lowe MLB hat yeah, there. Yeah. Just looking all sad. Wah, wah, wah. Come on, pal. What a loser. I, mean, that, yeah, I don't want to even give that my energy because that's rude that he does. I didn't know about him. Zach Campbell, who you crapping? <laughs> <laughs> who you crapping? Yeah, I, got, I had my bad take of the week on Twitter uh, regarding that because – like I, I know, I know of him because he's. They constantly bring him up when he catches a home run. I didn't realize that he's, you know, mauling little kids for these balls. You know, I know every once in a while you're going to come across one, but like I just, and, and I'll just continue to say this bad take. But it is just the fact that he catches as many balls as he does. I know he's a jerk. Everybody hates him. Everybody has all these different reasons, <laughs> but he. It's not easy to catch a home run. I've sat in the bleachers at Wrigley my entire life and have never. I've come close to catching a home run once. Has he caught one there though? 
Oh, yeah. Seems like he's going to a lot of empty ballparks. I've been at Wrigley. When it, when I went when they were allowing 60% capacity, right when they were just starting to reopen stadiums after COVID. I was like, here's my chance. Nobody's out here in the bleachers. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to finally catch my home run. It never came close. This guy's always catching home runs. I get he's a jerk. But, like, just the skill to know where to be yeah, forever. Skill. Even there, the kid caught it. He's standing right. He's right there for it. It's, it's pretty How many impressive. old ladies did he push over to get, get close right. to that? And in you Oakland, he's only got to push over, like, three people. And then everybody's like, oh, well, what about the kid? What if the kid's a jerk? <laughs> well, now you that's know. true. There are a lot of yeah. jerky kids Wearing out there. Wearing an Angels jersey to a White Sox game. <laughs> there are a lot of jerky kids that don't respect their not elders. my kid. You yeah. push my, my kid, kid, Zach. She's not a jerk. Yeah. She's a sweetheart. But... You know, I was a jerk as a kid, so you could have pushed me, and I think some people would have applauded it. Hey, shout out to my guy, Bologna Fonse. Did you say Bologna? Bologna? I, I never know how to pronounce that word. Bologna. Bologna, right? Yeah. Well, why did you spell it B-A-L-O-N-E-Y? It's like Colonel. Yeah, I don't my like it. Bologna anyway, he's my guy. He's, he's obviously a, a, a big guy in uh, CHO White Sox land. Uh, he said, I hate him, but honestly, he scouts hitters better than Sox. <laughs> exactly. Hitters. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, this guy's always in position. It's yeah. A, it's incredible. I don't know. So, like, 20 years ago, the Kansas City Star had me write a article on, like, where is the best place to sit if you want to catch a foul ball at a Royals game? And I went and I mapped everything out. And he had just written a book about, like, how to catch a foul ball. So I called him up and interviewed him. He was, like, nice then. But over the last 20 years, he's just been cut, like – I mean, I think he's probably still probably nice now. But I don't know, man. Like, it's not that important. Like, stop – why, why are you Big chasing loser the balls? energy. It's yeah. huge loser energy. Well, like, I mean, you want so a there, baseball? So there's this. Well, what if it makes him happy? So like, <laughs> as a you know what it's about. <laughs> well, as a Wrigley happy. Field faithful, I mean, we have a community of bleacher bums. Bleacher you know, Jeff. That I'm right. I'm friendly with Bleacher Jeff, my Thai guy. My Thai guy got Cody a lot of crap because he caught the one home run over a kid. Yeah. I think it was a walk off uh -huh. by Rizzo or. Somebody, but he, he took a lot of heat. He took a lot of heat on Twitter for it. He still does to this day. And I met my tech guy. He's a nice guy. I, I talk to him when I'm at games. And they all have a strategy. They know the metrics of where the most home runs are hit in the bleachers. So, like, there is a science to it. But even those guys, they're not always catching home runs. And this guy, Hample, is. I mean, my tie has like nine home run balls, so he knows what he's doing at Wrigley. Do you remember when Charlie Sheen bought the entire left field bleachers at Angel Stadium for like three straight games because he wanted to catch a home run, and then no home runs were hit there for three straight games? <laughs> That's, That's what great. I'm saying. It's not easy. There was a picture do. of him in, in Sports Illustrated just sitting out there with, with his glove, and no one hit one out there. How about Beautiful. this? <laughs> catch the stupid home run and give it to a kid because you're an adult. You don't need a freaking baseball. No, time out. Time out. <laughs> Come on. We're not going to shame this. It depends on who it is. Right. So, like, I have a couple if rules. I have a couple home rules run, here. You keep that I shit. had never caught a foul ball until like four years ago at Comiskey off Ben Zobris bat, World Series MVP. It was like the year or two after they won the World Series. I caught it on the fly. If, it, if I had caught it on the bounce, I would have gave it to a kid because that's not catching a ball. I caught it on the fly. I kept that yeah, ball. Yeah, but it's Zobris. Like, what does that mean? And to it's Zobris. Well, what does that mean to you now? He's what if you what if I you caught a shame? Maybe what if you have a kid you want to give the ball? I was going to exactly. say, I, I, Andy, I got him to sign the ball. Okay, I'm going to give it to Addy. If I catch a home run on the fly, I'm not giving that ball to a kid. I'm not. See, I think I, it depends on who happening. it is. Like, if it's a Mike Trout home run, you save that. Right. But if it's just like. I don't know. Shohei's another thing. Next time he's going to be in town, he'll be wearing a Cubs uniform. Let's go. <laughs> because of our Taylor Swift album cover. White Sox, Tom says, Hample should be banned from all parks. I agree with that. Rob Manfred would be a national hero. <laughs> Except in the Bragg. I don't household. know if we need to ban him. All, all 30 parks gone. Give him the Pete Rose treatment. Mm. In the words of Taylor Swift, whatevs. All right. Shake Real quickly, off. before we go, Vanilla Ice is coming to oh, nice. oh, so we're doing oh yeah well, well yeah Park. we were talking about this as a yeah. scroll stopper thing but let's talk about it because we're on the topic of of dun, dun. concerts it's not the beatles that is she bigger it's than not vanilla, the beatles. Ice. vanilla ice is coming after a uh, summer Sox game they're doing like a 90s theme is that august concert 25th? series i believe it is august 25th and which is by the way the rumored um date for a chgo golf outing Ooh, what's the date friday august 25th 
Mark your calendar. So everybody. we could go golfing, and then I'll go see Vanilla Ice. I mean, what do you guys think of this? Like, would you go see him? No. Period. End of story. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> People were, like, all upset about it. Like, the White Sox have been, like, attracting these world-class level talents for after the games. It's been, like, shitty Swedish DJs and... Yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Who was I, it last year? I, I loved that they had that ad, like, for, no, like, No, wait. A month. He retweeted us. It was... Who was Ooh. it? The DJ. Really? Oh, oh, yeah. Remember we did like a tweet about it and he retweeted <laughs> Just some it. Nobody. <laughs> Sean would know. It was- Cascade. DJ Cascade. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Never heard of him. Now, will Vanilla Eyes sing ninja rap from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? <laughs> that, that I might reconsider because that's my childhood. Play that right funky there. music, White Boy. Didn't yeah. he do that too? I don't think so. No, no. that's not him. No. See, right. you wouldn't go. Ninja, you wouldn't go. Ninja <laughs> rap. Remember? Yeah. Donatello, I do. Michelangelo. Like 35, 40 years ago at this point. Too old for that. <laughs> Luke, did you ever have lines in your hair like Vanilla Ice did? No, nope, did not. No, I, I first never job? have owned Vanilla Ice music. <laughs> Luke was a newsman. He couldn't be like that. You saw his p- no, picture I, from his what, 19, When was 20. he big? Like 1990. Yeah, I was into 80. Guns N' Roses and Aerosmith and... Rush and Pearl Jam and Nirvana. <laughs> Just name some bands. <laughs> that was my, I was a uh, little Tom Petty. Well, this has been CHGO Music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this has been the CHGO, the Chicago Sports Podcast. <laughs> uh, CHGO Music. All right. Wish me luck for uh, over the weekend. We'll see how it all works out. I'm going to live if we'll I don't see you get at in Taylor. there. We'll I don't know if Jake my wife Taylor. will, but we'll see. Just go hang Doesn't out. happen. Just shake go it hang off. out outside shake, the shake, stadium. Shake it yeah. get a, and get a fake ticket. Don't do yeah. that. I'll be out at uh, the cell on Friday night. So if anyone sees me, come say what's up. I'll be wearing my Ron Guaranteed Kittle jersey late. and my watermelon White Sox hat. So I'll be <laughs> easier spot. <laughs> Kaminsky. <laughs> okay. All right. The Chicago Sports Podcast. Thanks to Greg Braggs for stopping by. Thanks to the regulars. We'll see you guys next week.